Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Hari Krishna. We are learning the chapter Our Environment. In the previous video, we learned about the components of an environment or ecosystem and also their food chain, food wave concepts and the characteristics of food chains including unidirectional flow of energy, 1% law, 10% law, why trophic levels are limited in a food chain and also finally biological magnification. Please ensure that you know all these concepts well. If you are not thorough, please go back, watch the video and come back. Okay, today we are going to discuss two important harmful effects on the environment. That is, we are all closely integrated with the environment. So anything happening to the environment will affect us. The same way our actions can affect the environment also. Such two situations where our actions are interrupting the environmental balance we are going to discuss today. First is about the ozone depletion. So you know what is ozone? Ozone is a layer which is formed on the upper layer of the atmosphere and it acts as a blanket and protecting us from the harmful rays of the sun. So from sun UV rays are coming. Of that UVB rays are even more harmful. So this layer, the ozone layer prevents this UV from entering the surface of earth. As a result on the surface of earth we are all protected from the UV rays. Now after the UV rays come to the earth suppose what could be the consequences? So, if UV rays come to the earth, first consequence is skin cancer. People who are exposed to UV may get skin cancer. And also, there can be a kind of blindness called a snow blindness or UV cataract. You learned about cataract in human eye chapter where it is a cloudy layer forming over the cornea which can be rectified only using surgical methods. It happens due to old age, right? But here this is not due to age but it is due to exposure to UVB rays. You, there can be a cloudy appearance on your eye that is damaging to your eye that is called a UV cataract. So, in these two conditions are for animals, but plants also will be affected, their yield will be reduced, their growth will be affected, reproduction will be affected. So, because of all these, we need protection from UV, but it was very neatly, it was doing by the uh, UV, uh, this, sorry, ozone layer until 1980s. But 1980s, we found that there is the ozone hole developing. Actually, though we are using the word ozone hole, there is nothing like hole form, but the thinning of the ozone layer. So before this ozone layer was very thick, that is measured in a unit called a Dobson unit. You don't have to remember that, but that layer is becoming thinner. So once it is thinner, the protection is less, right? So as a result, the harmful rays can come to the surface of earth and cause damage to the living organisms. Now, what is ozone? Ozone is a O3, triatomic molecule of oxygen. You know that oxygen is O2, it is diatomic, but oxygen is a gas which is very essential for our survival. But the same oxygen, if it becomes O3, it is a bluish color gas and it is highly poisonous to us. But why are we not getting affected by ozone? Because it is far away from us, that's why we are not getting affected, but it is highly poisonous. Initially, when the ozone layer was forming, it was formed by the action of UV ray itself. Oxygen was there in the atmosphere. It was split by UV rays from the sun into O. One O can bind with another oxygen molecule to become O3. So eventually this O3 molecules formed and they because of their less density they all went to the upper layer of the atmosphere and they formed a layer which further protected us from the harmful rays of UV. But what caused the depletion of this ozone in 1980s? 1980s only we came to know about it because we used certain substances like a chlorofluorocarbons. So these are substances which are used as coolants. We use it in refrigerators, we use it in air conditioners and also some perfumes and even your whiting may contain this chlorofluorocarbons. But what is the problem with it? The chlorofluorocarbons once released, they will go to the upper layer of the atmosphere where ozone is there. From the layer ozone, it will take away the molecular oxygen. As a result, what happens? The ozone will get depleted. But this chloro, chlorine or chlorofluorocarbon has chlorine. Chlorine is doing this work. But chlorine is not getting used up in this reaction. It is again and again repeating. So whatever we have sent there is continuing its job there. We can't do anything. Only what we can do is 
don't emit further or don't add on to what is already emitted that is the only way we can uh, prevent further depletion so for that all the countries became alert and they signed a Montreal protocol uh, to reduce the use of chlorofluorocarbons or cease the use of chlorofluorocarbons nowadays we are getting refrigerators and other air conditioners and all without this kind of chemical even some perfumes if you look at the branded perfumes you can see ozone friendly is written in that or even some brands of whiting it has got um, written ozone friendly that means there is no chlorofluorocarbon in it so this is about ozone ozone depletion ozone formation and uh, what is the reason for ozone depletion in 1987 united nations environment program they uh, came with a law that all the countries should suspend or limit the, uh, the CFC uh, release up to 1986 level so that no more CFC is being added. So it's a mandatory for all the electronic manufacturing companies to make refrigerators and all free of CFCs. The second environmental issue which needs our attention is garbage. Garbage means all domestic waste. It can be of two types, biodegradable waste and non-biodegradable waste. Biodegradable waste means the waste or substances which can be broken down into harmless substances by microorganisms. For example, wood, paper, food, leftover food, cloth, etc. That is uh, natural uh, fibers. Whereas uh, the substances which cannot be broken down into harmless, simpler substances by microorganisms are called uh, non-biodegradable substances. Example, DDT, uh, pesticides, other pesticides, then plastic, glass metal cans, iron nails, radioactive waste etc or synthetic fibers all these are non-biodegradable substance. So here you can get two questions either they will ask you the difference between biodegradable and non-biodegradable or they will give a few list of items you have to choose the biodegradable ones and non-biodegradable ones. Now we know that biodegradable waste are comparatively safer because they are broken down by microorganisms thanks to decomposers. They will split it into harmless simpler substances so that it will merge into the soil. Whereas uh, even though they are uh, depleted by the microorganisms, can they cause any harm to us? Yes, two ways they can affect us. One, the more the garbage is, it can cause spread of various diseases by giving it or acting as a uh, breeding ground for mosquitoes, flies, rodents, etc. Because it takes long time for degradation. If they are not degraded or on time, they can uh, make lot of environmental issues including the smell that it is producing and also spread of diseases. So pile of garbage, they will remain in the place for a longer time which can pollute the environment. So these are the problems even if they are biodegradable substances. Now coming to non-biodegradable, of course they remain in the soil or in the environment for a longer period of time without being uh, affected by microorganisms. As a result, they will cause a lot of environmental pollution and also they can harm the living organisms because many of them are toxins. Now there comes a question, why some are biodegradable, some non-biodegradable? The reason is, biodegradable means microorganisms are digesting. For digestion, what is required? Enzyme. Enzymes are highly specific. The enzyme which digests the starch in my mouth cannot digest protein in my stomach. The enzyme which is digesting protein in my stomach cannot digest lipid or fat. So each one is very specific in its nature. We have the enzyme to deplete our food to get the energy or the nutrients required for us. But plastic DDT are not our food so there is no enzyme. Even microorganisms have to deplete them to get energy. The reason why we are not eating a piece of food or a piece of coal or some soil is because we don't get energy from them. We need macros for us, right? So that is the reason. So enzymes are not there produced by these organisms to degrade this non-biodegradable substances. Now coming to their disposal, we have many measures, some are uh, successful, some are failure, failures in some countries, um, especially uh, usually what we are doing is, first method is by landfill, we just uh, put them in uh, abandoned areas or of vacant uh, empty places so that it can pile up there and uh, over a period of time it will get decayed. 
Then second is recycling. If there is recyclable materials there, we can recycle that. Or we can, you, biodegradable waste can be used for making biogas. Biogas plants can be kept at homes itself and small units can be kept. Then also another one is incineration. Incineration means burning at a very high temperature so that everything will burn into ash without forming any residue. And finally compost making which can be later utilized in the farm fields. Hope you understood these two environmental issues that I discussed today. If you understood my lessons, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.